Hello, Boro. I'm trying to develop illustration pieces to make a student portfolio. I feel like for most pieces I can get an idea of how to improve, but for this one I'm a little… lost. The idea was to have a corpse-looking lady in deep, foggy waters. But as I'm painting, I have no idea how to make all these materials – skin, hair, the mirror – act as if in water. This image is just a bunch of artistic liberties. Proof that I have no idea what I'm doing anymore. Hi guys, my name is Barrodante. Well, that was a long break. I don't know if it's over yet, but I'm here today, so... Welcome back to Overpain! Felt like just the right thing to do to reignite the channel. Today's patient is Louis Brock. Hi, Louis! So, Louis was trying to visualize a corpse-looking lady in the fog water, and pretty much he felt like he didn't know what he was doing. I mean, I see what you mean. Like, for many artists, uh, this thing that we're looking at here, this is the original, this kind of look many artists would be totally fine with. This is an overall decent picture with a nice color gamma and just a cool stylish factor to it. So it's pretty satisfying, but at the same time feels pretty fast. It's kind of unfinished. And you may also say that it's kind of looking like a colorized drawing, not really a painting. And the difference is really in painting having a real full 3D lighting and actual materials of objects. And in here, indeed, many objects... Well, pretty much shading on the hand and shading on the metal decor of the mirror is pretty much the same thing. It's not a drastic difference. And of course, the big deal is about visualizing things in water, which is a tough thing to do considering things in water don't really look any special. That's why sometimes they even shoot certain scenes in movies underwater if they want to visualize like space in old movies. I remember that was a thing. So the first thing I decided to go about the whole water problem is changing the lighting. If we're underwater, there should be no lighting from the bottom and pretty much from the sides as well. So we kind of need to drown the object in the darkness from all the sides except for the very bottom. So all the surfaces that are facing sideways or of course downwards are getting much darker. And overall, I'll introduce a stronger gradient to the darkness just from top to bottom. So in here we'll have a darker thing, while the mirror is still reflecting things, ignoring the darkness. So it's gonna look appropriate. And also the metal will also shine. Because I think metal is one of few things that keep shining underwater. Like skin becomes like matte looking. Skin shines because it has liquid on its surface, like moisture. And underwater everything is moisture, so there's no surface of our moisture to be reflective. Also oils, but they don't have a big difference in density comparing to water, so I think they lose their ability to form a reflective surface. So I'm gonna keep doing what I just said. I really like the flat pink background. I'm gonna definitely keep it. I do plan on adding more of this kind of uh, rim reflection, Fresnel reflection of that pink color on the edges of hair. Of course, not nearly as bright as the actual background, but, you know, adding that color a little bit, because that's what materials do if we're going for a rich, cool-looking rendering, which is something that the face of the character implies, then we should do that kind of stuff for sure. The background is pretty bright, so makes sense. Let's continue.
So I'm adding some of the hairs that like keep floating on the surface of the water. That happens sometimes and looks pretty cool. Also defining the fact that there is a water line. But the much bigger deal that I want to add is actually the reflection on the surface of the water, which will be that exact pink color reflecting like if it would be going all the way, we would see the outline of the head and it would be like this. If you know what I mean, let me show it a bit clearer like this because like this part of the head is sticking out creating a darker reflection or pretty much blocking the reflection of the bright sky but considering that we have the angle of the waterline very different in this case the camera like where is it located it's not above the water and it's not under the water. It's like we have a really big camera that meets the water line exactly in here. So there's just a tiny line and this is actual water touching the surface of the camera lens. And in here, the camera lens is above the water level, which is not really a thing you can make a photo of. You wouldn't have such a big camera, you would have a very blurry blob in here because the waterline would be so close and out of focus right at the smaller lens that you have. So it would look very different, but this is a drawing. So it looks more like she's inside of this rectangular water tank. <laughs> but anyway, what I want to do right now is I want to introduce a little bit of three-dimensional aspect to this scenario and we'll have like about this amount of waterline so it would be having like this kind of perspective right that will let us introduce some of the cool reflections and stuff like that actually even more narrow like where the hairs and somewhere around there will have that a little bit of the pink reflection and then it will be over this will be a good way to show the exact moment where we transition underwater and will let us add a little tiny bit of maybe cool reflections if we do it right also in the background i would like fade the water into nothing like i don't want this to look like a tiny water tank i want to make the feeling of what it's probably supposed to be like a lake probably let it have a little bit of space in the background just like that I think it will introduce some hint on the actual distance that we have some air to breathe back there. I'll add some more detail to that as well. Now let's add some reflection and then add some of the fog at the upper level of water since we are in the foggy water. So in the original it was kind of the opposite. For some reason the fogginess of the water started at the bottom. Which like probably that artistic liberty that Lewis was talking about, maybe not, but it definitely is one of those. Or maybe it's a hint that there's some kind of magic or whatever, some kind of glow going on at the bottom. But that decision, having nothing wrong with it on its own, it's one of many that play against us actually trying to visualize the underwater feeling. This deep, foggy, dark lake water. It shouldn't be just all flat lit like that. It shouldn't become brighter at the bottom. It literally plays against the feeling of being underwater. Unless you're like in a pool with blue tiles. So yeah, um, right now I'm making this darkness at the bottom. It may seem like it's not the best way to change the picture. Like it becomes a bit too dull at the bottom there. But on top of this base we can add some of the artistic liberties just to make the picture look more playful more reflections of the metal will come in handy and stuff like that let's continue
that may be it. Fix the symmetry in the face a little bit. Change the reflection on the mirror because that one was very like, I don't know, vector graphics default, kind of like couple of stripes of reflection. Really like not the place to use that kind of reflection. We need like a rich kind of look, especially considering we're in the natural environment, we're in the lake, so there's much more likely to be some kind of foggy light rays reflected in this mirror rather than that kind of studio lighting so that definitely feels way better and deeper on the looks and the metal is way darker with spiky sharp reflections on it definitely not perfect because this is a high detail element and I don't have the time to go all over it but from the far distance it looks pretty good I think not sure if I want to add any kind of extra aerial perspective in the back, like there were some kind of pink elements in the back there, even below the water. I don't know, I would add a completely different color to accompany everything else. Like maybe some kind of lime, cold yellow, but it would really turn it into some kind of a happy color advertisement and we have a pretty grim atmosphere in here at the moment and I want to keep it that way some kind of particles here and there so yeah also the black reflection of the hands in the mirror considering probably only fingertips actually touch the mirror here the rest is increasing the distance and then this distance remains here so that's why i drew like the opposite black finger that's touching the hand from the opposite side like from the mirror's side and pretty much that's how you think about it when you draw this kind of reflection think about what is the actual contact place even this kind of part will look even better and yeah, I introduced a little bit of uh, aerial perspective, water perspective, really, right? Fog, fogginess uh, in here because it's like um, the distance may be increasing there since we're looking. Maybe this spot is reflecting somewhere over here. So yeah, the distance is getting bigger. And I also got a chance to show the edge of the actual mirror surface here, which is cool. Oh yeah, as I'm looking at it without thinking of it as just a series of changes, this looks pretty deep, heavy, and foggy too, so yeah, that's pretty dope, I think. Oh yeah, these hands sticking out of this black mass, sinking in the water, looking really cool. I would maybe make all of the hands a little bit brighter, since the hair is black and the skin is pale white, there should be some remaining contrast going on, even in the darkness. If we see something, we should see this contrast as well as we see it at the top. I like the fix on the face too. The face looks a bit more attractive, and here it's kind of melted a bit to fit the horizontal line of the water, while having the head a bit tilted, like you gotta choose one or the other. <laughs> And yeah, some depth to the horizon of the lake in the distance over there, that's pretty cool too. Could use like six more hours of adding some cool little details, making things a lot more polished, like literally making every branch much more accurate. The specific lines of how exactly hair is sinking into the water and getting back out of it with many many details of different strings of hair sinking in the water. So there's that. Thank you, Lewis, for your submission. This was a really cool picture to just look for the good representation of the idea while maintaining a very specific and strong stylization, even though it being anime face plus pink background. And flat pink branches are also cool. If any of you guys want me to overpaint your picture like this, the link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video. You become my patron and submit the picture with a message, I read the message and overpaint the picture. But for now this is it, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!
It's such a huge test of willpower to have most of the scene intentionally without any highlights. You just wanna add them so much and it seems like it will look much better if you add those. But in reality, if you remove them and just pay more attention to the values of the just the lighting without reflection, it will really pay off looking like it's underwater. And on top of the water, go ahead and add a whole bunch of reflections, because the character is wet. They'll have a whole lot of those. 